Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. My name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader of this church community, and I'm so grateful that you have taken some time out of your day in your journey of faith to be a part of what God is doing here in the city of San Marcos. We have a saying around here, you don't have to go to church here to go to church here, and that means you are welcome to enjoy this message from your tablet, phone, or computer, wherever you're watching it on. Big things can happen when we expect God to move, so I pray today that God would speak to you through this message, the message today can encourage you and empower you to move throughout your week and what's next in your life. So enjoy this message. Just getting started in a series here called What Faith Looks Like. So last week was our first, uh, our first week of it, and we, we talked about how faith sometimes looks like sacrifice. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to trade to grow your faith or to grow your relationships or to just grow in general? And we ask the question, maybe more importantly, what are you not willing to give up? What are you not willing to trade? And that can be a good way of identifying what kind of something we're holding on to that can maybe prevent us from growing. But today, what I want to dig into with you is talk about something else that faith looks like. And this is something that I very much connect with. Faith, to me, and maybe to you, sometimes looks like doubt. Faith can look like doubt. Now, I could do a four or five week series just on the things that I have doubted in my life. I could talk for hours on that, the things that I have doubted. Because I, I don't know if you're like me, and I won't have you raise your hands for this, but I deal with a lot of self-doubt. I know I act like I'm confident. That's why I'm co I, I do that so I can cover the self-doubt that I have. I, have, uh, I deal with self-doubt sometimes, and then not, not, not all of it is self-doubt. Not all the doubt that I encounter is self-doubt. Sometimes things happen in my life that make me doubt what I thought was there. Sometimes things happen in my faith, in my journey of faith, that makes me doubt certain things about my faith. Sometimes things happen in my parenting that make me doubt that I know how to be a parent. Any parents? Amen. Yeah. Nobody knows what we're doing. Until they're old and grown up and you're like, okay, give me the grandkids now. Now I know what I'm doing. Uncle Dom definitely knows what he's doing. Sometimes things happen in my marriage, my relationship, that makes me doubt that I know how to be a good husband or a halfway decent husband or a husband at all. And so I'm not trying to drag you down with all these doubts, but I, I want you to think about just for the next 20 minutes or so that we're together is where are the places in your life that you have doubts? Now, we did a series months and months ago, maybe last year, I think, called Spiritual Bypass. And we talked about the ways that we can bypass what we're experiencing because we just don't want to. And I think one of the things that we're very good at bypassing, one of the things is we're coming down the road and we have this doubt in front of us, this doubt in faith, this doubt in God, this doubt in prayer, this doubt in our marriage, this doubt in our parenting, this doubt in our job, this doubt that we can, that we can exceed and succeed in our life. And what we, what we do, what we can do, is we, we come up to it and we say, here's this doubt, and instead of dealing with the doubt, we just sidestep it and bypass it and pretend that the doubt isn't even there. Well, today, for the next 20 minutes, I want you and me to stare right in the face of this doubt that we have in our life. I want to tell you about one of the areas that I 
have experienced doubt in. It was growing up, or my son growing up. Well, I guess I had, uh, so Corbin, when Corbin was born, I was 22 years old. So I would say I was growing up as he was growing up. So I was 22. I had no idea what I was doing with anything in life. Still don't, but really didn't back then. If you were 22 uh, some time ago, you know what I mean. If you're 22 now, apologies. No offense, man. <laughs> and every, every, every year I think, okay, I kind of got it figured out, kind of. And then he would change and he would turn into a different person. And then anybody have kids in middle school, remember their kids in middle school, and they just became like different people. Like, who, who are you? And what's wrong with you? And I would have a lot of doubt. And, you know, we would split time with his mom. He would, he would be with his mom part of the week and then with us every couple of days. And so I was trying to figure out how to manage that, how to be, to par- how to be a parent while he wasn't with me. I, I tried to f- how, how could I figure out how to be a full-time dad when I'm only seeing him part-time? And that just introduced a lot of doubt into my life, a lot of doubt on how to be a good dad, how to be the dad I wanted to be. And there was some days where that doubt would cause me to kind of spiral and feel sorry for myself. One of my superpowers is feeling sorry for myself. Anybody, anybody really good at that? Just really great at feeling sorry for myself. And some days the doubt would, would drive me to, to want to do better and, and somewhat improve. But, but I couldn't deny that that doubt was there. And that wasn't always the case. Not that I didn't have doubt, but that I would acknowledge the doubt. And doubt is one of those tricky things because especially, especially in faith, doubt can be a scary word. Especially in the Christian faith, especially in the Christian faith on Sunday, talking about it at church, doubt can be a scary word. Sometimes we we, we equate that to if you doubt, if you doubt anything about God, then you doubt everything about God. When I was growing up, I was kind of taught that way. You either believe everything or you believe nothing. And what that did is that left no room for doubt. I was taught if you doubt, just trust. If you doubt, just trust. And while that sentence is very short, it didn't always make a lot of sense to me. What am I supposed to do with my doubt? Well, I want to, maybe, and maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't like to talk about your doubt that you have in your life and doesn't like to deal with it, and that's okay. Just for the next, t- the next few minutes that we're here together, what if we had the doubts that we have in our faith, in our marriage, in our life, we brought it out and say, okay, here's the doubt. Now, what are we going to do with this? And maybe you're in a place right now where you're not doubting anything. That's, that's good. You're in a good place right now. We, we need your, I need your support in the doubts that I deal with. I want to look at a particular verse today that, in my opinion, speaks to doubt. Now, I, I have to tell you, uh, maybe this is a little bit of a disclaimer, but I personally am very, very comfortable with doubt. But it, I, I know that not everyone is, so I'm not trying to push you off a, you know, the, the doubt cliff. But I do want to explore with you today, what if doubt was not the enemy? What if doubt was not the problem? But if doubt can be this open door for us to discover what our problem might be what we need to address in our life, in our faith. So I want to look at uh, the, the book of James, and we're going to look at the Message Bible today. This is right at the beginning of this. This is James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Watch this. I think this is pretty juicy. This is right at the beginning. It says, consider it a sheer gift. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. 
You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. How many of you, when there's some problem, some challenge, some test, some doubt in your life, what you really want to do is hurry up and get out of that problem? When we're sad, when we're upset, we want to hurry up and get past that. If we have doubts, we want to hurry up and get past that, right? And there's some wisdom here of not getting out of that prematurely. Why? Watch what he says. Because when you're under pressure, when you have these challenges, when you have these doubts... When you have these tests and you're under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. That is why it is so easy to avoid challenges, tests, doubts. Because when our faith life or any part of our life is forced into the open and exposed for us to see, it is scary to look at. We don't want to see that exposed. It's probably why I never go up to Amber, my wife, and say, how do you think I'm doing as a husband today? Scale of one to 10. (laughs) Can you imagine? I would, I will never ask that. You want to know why? I don't want to know the answer. Unless it's 10. And if it's 10, fire away. What do you think today, babe? 10? That's why I don't go to my son and say, hey, how do you think I'm doing as a, how do you think I did as a dad during your middle school years? There's a part of me that I don't want to know. I don't want to know some of the things that I could have said and didn't. I don't want to know some of the things that I could have encouraged you with and did not. F- 15 minutes into every message now on Sunday, I'm going to say, hey, guys, how do you think this message is going? <laughs> I am 0% interested in knowing how you think it's going because I don't want that exposed and now I have to look at it and face it. But watch what James is saying. James is saying, consider it a gift. Another translation says, consider it pure joy when these problems come into your life. It is a gift These doubts, challenges, problems, they are a gift when they come into our life. Why? Because it exposes what needs to grow. And instead of trying to get out of anything prematurely, what what he says is we need to sit in it, stay in it, get through it, not around it. How many of the doubts in your life Do you just ignore or try to get around? How many of the doubts do you have in your faith that you just say, I'm just going to ignore that doubt. I don't have time to deal with that doubt. I don't have the spiritual capacity to deal with my doubting of praying to God. I I don't have the mental capacity to deal with the doubts that I have in my marriage or at work or with my kids. I don't have the time to deal with that. I got to catch up on this show, you know. If you're taking notes or if you want to take notes, I want you to write something down. Doubt, the doubt that you have in your life, that is the beginning of faith, not the enemy of faith. The doubt that you have in your faith, if there's any, That is the beginning of it. And I'm not trying to argue with you. I'll just argue with myself. I used to think that the ultimate goal in faith, the ultimate goal in spirituality, was to get where you had no doubt. And for me, what that got me is, if I have no doubt, then I have no faith. What is there to have faith for? If you have no doubt, what you have is certainty. And certainty and faith are not the same thing. 
So I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. I want to ask you to embrace your doubt. Let the doubt that you have be the beginning, the next step in your journey of faith. And not let it be a bad word to your faith. Because here's what happens when we bypass uncertainty, okay? We're going along our road. We're in our journey of faith, our journey of marriage, our journey of parenting, our journey of becoming a better person, whatever we want to be. And we face uncertainty. That's what doubt is, right? Uncertainty. You're certain about something until something happens that challenges that, and then you're a little uncertain. You're certain that God answers prayer. And so you pray and pray and pray for something to happen. And at the end, it doesn't happen. A little seed of uncertainty arises. A little bit of doubt. Because if you were told your whole life, God answers prayer, and you told yourself, God answers prayer, and then you pray and pray for someone in your life to get healed. You pray and pray for this promotion. You pray and pray for God to save your marriage. You pray and pray for a baby. And then it doesn't happen. The baby never comes. The marriage ends in divorce. Someone else gets that job that isn't even a Christian. Can you believe good things happen to people who aren't Christians? That was all sarcasm. That person you prayed for, not only did they not get healed, they got worse. So if you've been told your whole life that God answers prayer, why isn't God answering this prayer? Now, I'm not here to answer that question because there is no answer. I'm here to tell you that what that does for your faith is it introduces some doubt. And if we're not careful, we'll bypass that doubt. We'll just make up some reason. We'll make up some reason. Uh, well, God was busy, or he did something else in a better way, or he did something else in a different way. And I know some of you know this story, but years ago, this is probably a decade ago now, my wife and I, we were doing IVF to have a baby. Prayed and 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 prayed. A bunch of very spiritual people, people that will, they're way more spiritual than me. People that are like building the gate at heaven, you know, not just guarding the gate, you know what I'm saying? Like those kind of, they were praying and praying and praying and praying. Baby never came. Baby never came. So would anyone blame me? Would anyone have blamed me if I would have said, all right, well, I prayed to God to have a baby, and it didn't come, so obviously God's not real. He doesn't exist. He can't, well, if he does exist, he can't hear me, and if he can't hear me, it's even worse because he's not even listening. So I'm out of here. Good luck. Good luck with your certainty, right? In my most cynical moments, that's what I am like with, when it comes to doubt. But what? So why am I still here? Why do I still have faith? Here's what happens. When you bypass uncertainty, we lose our chance to grow. Instead of doubt being the enemy of faith, it's the beginning of faith. And if we face uncertainty, if we don't bypass it, we face uncertainty, then what we're faced with is an opportunity to grow if we choose to. Because I've known people where doubt was enough for them to walk away from their faith. Doubt was enough for them to walk away from their marriage. Doubt was enough for them to be disconnected from their children. I've known people, and myself have walked away from certain things, where uncertainty was enough to cut it off. Uncertainty was enough to cut off that relationship. But when we bypass uncertainty, we lose our chance to grow. We lose an opportunity. Now, can you grow in your life otherwise? Sure, there are ways to grow. You can keep growing. But the biggest leaps of growth you'll have in your life, the biggest leaps you'll take in your life when it comes to your faith or your marriage is when you don't bypass uncertainty but face that uncertainty, face that doubt. Because it's not if you will face doubt in life. It's not if you will face doubt, but it's what you will do with that doubt. 
What are you going to do when doubt comes into your life? Maybe you're, maybe you're in the middle of doubting something right now, doubting something in your faith. And if you're not doubting something in your faith now, maybe you've already dealt with that in the past, or maybe, just maybe, there's going to be some doubt in your future when it comes to your faith. If you're taking notes, write this down. If, it's not if, it's not if, it's not if you will face challenges, it's not if you will face doubts, it's not if you will face uncertainty. Because it will come. I'm not trying to speak negative over your life. I'm just talking about living the human experience. So what will you do when that doubt comes? Because I know, just like you know, that it is so, oh, so easy to ignore the doubt, to bypass that uncertainty, to say, I don't have time. I don't have time to deal with this doubt. I'm just going to keep pushing forward. I don't have time to deal with the doubt that's in my marriage. We're just going to keep pushing forward and just be good roommates together because everything else is going to take too much work. It's if we ignore doubt. This is the last thing I want you to write down or take a picture of or just remember, put it in your brain. Ignoring doubt that will give you a sense of security, but it is a false sense of security that is not certainty. In fact, I don't even want your goal to be certainty, if I can say that. I wish for you a life of many doubts, not a life of certainty, because a life of doubts pushes you to grow. In fact, I don't even think James over here wishes you a life of certainty. He wants these gifts to come into your life, these gifts of challenges and doubts and uncertainty, because James wants you to grow. When we prayed for a baby years and years ago and it didn't come, I had a choice to make. I was, this doubt was right in front of me. I said, what am I going to do with this doubt? And I had to ask myself, do I have my faith in God because he does things for me? Or do I have my faith in God because I choose to? And I decided that I have my faith in God because I choose to have faith in God, not because he will or won't do something for me. And my faith grew through that doubt. There was a while in our, in our marriage, my wife and I, my current wife, <laughs> she's not here, is she? She's not here. That's what happens. My current wife, we had some doubts, and you know what that doubt did? That doubt could have led to more and more problems, but we chose for that particular doubt to lead to counseling. And over the past six, seven years, we have each been in counseling together and separately to grow, to grow ourselves. The doubts that I had in parenting led me to research different ways I could grow as a parent. I could have just stepped back from that and said, hey, everyone has a tough tough job raising their kids. Everyone has a hard time. Everyone has to deal with whatever they have to deal with. And I'm doing the best I can, so that's what it is. That could have been easy. That would have been easy to bypass my doubt and uncertainty and all that that way. But in that moment, I chose to, you know, I want to I wanna try to be a better dad. These are the small moments, and, I, and I'm not telling you about all the moments <laughs> in life that, uh, that doubt didn't lead to growth. Because my doubt that I have doesn't always lead to growth. Sometimes my doubt leads to going to get a couple of donuts or something like that. Sometimes the the doubt and the uncertainty I have cause me to question even more. And there's things in my life, there's things still in my faith where that doubt brings a lot of shoulder shrugs. Like, I don't know, I don't know. 
But that's why I said at the beginning, that's why I, I'm not scared of doubt anymore. I used to be scared of doubt. And I, if I can give you just a little bit of encouragement in that today, is to not be scared of doubt. Not to be scared of an I don't know, I'm not sure. To embrace the doubt because, like James said, when we embrace the doubt, man, we are our faith life really gets a chance to grow. And so my hope for you is to have doubt. My hope for you is to have uncertainty only for the reason that I want you to use that to grow, to grow in your faith. I would not have the faith I have today if it hadn't been for all the times where supposedly God let me down, right? Or God didn't hear my prayer or God didn't answer my prayer or God didn't show up the way I wanted him to. I wouldn't be standing here with the faith that I have. Because that's how, that's how my faith has grown. My faith has, I can tell you this, my faith has not grown when good things have happened. My faith has grown when difficult things have happened. That's my challenge for you. That's my hope for you. I want to pray for you guys this morning. If you could, could you close your eyes and bow your heads just for a moment? I want to give you a challenge today, and in a moment I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And I want you to raise your hand if you can say to yourself, I want to face my doubt this week. I want to look into my life and face the doubt I have in my faith. I want to face the doubt I have in my marriage. I want to face the doubt I have in my parenting. I want to face the doubt I have at work. And all you have to do is remember James 1, 2 through 4 says, that is a gift. That doubt in your life is a gift. So I want, you, I want you to raise your hand in a moment. If you're willing to take that challenge to face that doubt and let it grow you. If you want to challenge that, if you want to challenge yourself to do that this week, on the count of three, put your hand up. One, two, three, put it up real quick. Okay, let's put our hands down. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. God, I thank you that you are bigger than doubt. You are bigger than uncertainty. And as we walk through this journey of life, this journey of faith, I pray that you would be there alongside with us. Be there with us in the doubt. Be there with us in the darkness. Be there with us in the uncertainty. And I pray that we would be bold and brave enough to step into that doubt, to work through it, and to grow from it. So we love you, and we pray that in your name. Amen. Y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. To find out what is next for you in your journey of faith, I want to invite you to go to theheart.church slash next. See what's in store for you. Get in touch with us. We would love to be able to connect with you and see how we can partner with you in your journey. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.